give up my seat, like in first class, all the seats are good. So it's gonna be like, yeah. can I sit here? Oh, sure, no problem. As long as you, as long as my seat is dope same too, yeah. same class. The only thing I don't like is when they get up, you sit down, you gotta feel their butt warmth. <laughs> <laughs> it's all warm because their booty was there. Right. And now you sitting on their booty heat. <laughs> that's so silly. I had to listen to that one today. It was like, if you're sitting somewhere and somebody else comes up to you and they ask if you could switch seats with them because they have a family or whatever the case is, like, do you get up? What do you say or whatever? So that was a good, good one. That was interesting. Um, Personally, I wouldn't care. Like, I like the window, so if I get to the window, if I, I finesse myself to the window, I could be sitting in somebody else's seat. If I'm at the window and it's not your seat, baby, better luck next time. Not with me. You better go to whoever seat y'all had that was sitting with you and ask the people next to them. Because with me, no. But if I'm in the middle already anyway and you offering me a window, I'm going to move. If I'm in the... If like I'm in the middle and you offer me a middle, like I was there anyway, I'm gonna let them sit with their family. I'm gonna get up and move. Um, if it's like I'm in the middle and it's an aisle, I get up and move because I rather have an aisle in the middle. Like it just depends on what it is, where it is. How can this benefit me? Because you had the opportunity to pay for your shit when you was online. So what do you mean? You know what I'm saying? Like, or maybe the seats wasn't together, but don't ask me. Ask the flight attendant, like, before we take off, you know, can you see if there's a seat for me and my family to sit together? But in this one case, this lady said the son was 17 years old. He could sit by himself. He can manage. These people ain't gonna do nothing to him. Calm down. But anyway, I'm about to go into the job. I really don't want to wear no mask because I put my makeup on today. We'll see. Maybe while I'm cleaning up. Well, I'm only in here for a second, so I better be safe. I need to go to the office and pick up some more gloves. Yeah, I might be able to be with y'all today because I got some stuff to do besides, like, real hardcore work. <laughs> so, anyway. <gasps> These things been falling off lately. That's so era. Damn, that's so irritating. That bitch knew what she was doing. Anyway, I'm about to go up in here. I actually could have been more on time if I wasn't listening to the radio. I also had to call my doctor's office because I need to see a pain specialist from the accident. Like, I've just been letting shit linger. But I was like, okay, I'm going to go ahead and set up an appointment with them. So I had to get a whole bunch of stuff faxed over. So they're taking care of that for me. And then I had to call the special, the pain specialist. Then I had to call my doctor's office. And so a bunch of calls being made this morning. I still got more calls to make. I'm going to be a little busy, but not as busy as I have been. She got her little African-American things in the window. Oh, what the hell? They're remodeling a little bit.
Okay, so I've taken you guys to this client with me before, but that's all I do there. Wash the dishes. I pretty much like tidy up the kitchen. Um, she has everything stacked and ready to go. She used to have the dishwater ready to go, but the last two weeks she hasn't. So, and I only come here once a week. Um, so that's pretty much all I do. I straighten up the kitchen, the bathroom, and I'll dust probably like once a month. Um, I've only done laundry once and I've been here a while. So, but when I did her laundry, she had like 50 pair of panties and like she's she stocked so i don't know what she do but um yeah not much to do so i have two hours um she already told me from jump like she wants me to go get her a coffee when i come and that's really just to kill time because she doesn't have much for me um because we still have time left and she doesn't have anything for me to do so i the last thing i do will the last thing i will do is get her coffee <laughs> um so it could be hot when she gets it. So I take this opportunity because we get paid uh, up to 10 miles a week. Like I said, I only have her once a week. So I go to the gas station that I like to go to. It's on the west side. I live on the east side, uh, far east side. So I take this opportunity because I'm like halfway in the middle right now to go to the McDonald's right next door to the gas station. Um, so I'm going to go get my gas. And because I'm going to go get my gas, it might take up a little bit more time. I don't know how much time we're working with today, but I usually be like pressed for time. Um, because in here, uh, it's always something new. I got to do like a little extra something all the time. It's 12 o'clock on the dot right now. But I got to do like a little something extra and it kind of puts me over. So at first it was just dishes and clean the sink. So I would do the dishes and clean the sink and I would have like an hour and 30 minutes or so left or whatever. Um, but now it's like the dishes, her stove, um, the counters, the floors, like sweeping the bathroom. I'm not only doing the sink, I'm doing the mirrors, like just because that's stuff that I see, like she's not asking me to do that, but it's like, you know, I'm on the clock. I'm not taking advantage of that. Like I see it's wrong. And even though she didn't ask me to do it, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So it's taking a little bit more time to get out of there now. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to go get my gas first and actually i don't even know if i'm gonna make it i'm gonna make it <laughs> i'm gonna make it but that's like i won't eat i'm gonna eat and i like i'm always on eat come tuesday anyway so if you want me to get you a coffee i need to stop and get some gas so so i'm gonna go get the gas first i'm gonna sit um in a store parking lot and it's a store across the street and I got to do some stuff for work and call some people and stuff like that. So I'm going to do that. Then I'm going to get her coffee and then come back here. I usually give myself like two, three minutes to just be like, oh, here's your coffee. Here's your change. Clock out. Do you need anything else? She said her birthday Friday. So I'll probably give myself like five minutes just in case she want to talk about something else. Like happy birthday, whatever. I was about 10 minutes late. So I got to add that time on to here. So yeah, that's about it. And um, I had to go back to work. I had to go back to work for real because I was going insane. Like I had too much time on my hands. And it's so crazy because I was trying to tell my son to talk myself through it. Like, what's the problem? What's the issue? Like, is it really an issue or is it like, I just got too much time on my hands. Do I think going to work is gonna help? Like stuff like that. As soon as I went to work, like, maybe three days of work it was like what was i talking what was i talking about what was the issue what was i worried about like you know what i'm saying so like i just had to get up out the house and be doing something so <sighs> yeah that'd be something else to add to my um interview questions the answers you know and they'd be like why do you want to work with old people or they, like they usually ask that like why do you want to work with seniors why is this something that you want to do i have I have to like while I'm working like take a step back and assess the good in what I do because when they ask me that I used to be like cuz I want to like cuz that's all I know my answer would be like cuz that's all I know you know and it's like that's that's weird like that's that's not a good answer so as I got older I'm like you know what 
while I'm at work, I need to be figuring this stuff out. Even when I'm scheduling, like I like to make my own schedule. I like to have a say so in what hours I work. I like that I don't have to always call the office and be like, hey, can I do this? Can I do that? They refer me right to my client. Like, did you ask your client? Have you talked to your client about it? Like, it's like whatever me and my client come up with. If the client cool with it, they cool with it. You know what I'm saying? So like typically we don't do weekends we don't not work on the weekends but typically we don't we do like a monday through friday but if i ask my client hey instead of wednesdays can i come on saturdays you know what i'm saying my client be like yeah then that's what we doing you know i kind of like stuff like that so but honestly per but honestly personally i feel like I don't know it's just i like to do stuff for people but you never know like if people taking advantage of you and stuff like that i mean and i wouldn't say that they taking advantage but because like i have um you know chronic injuries from the car accident and it's like some days i'm okay to clean the bathroom because that consists of a lot of bending for me some days i'm okay with that and some days it's like oh that shit ain't getting done today like my body is tight not doing it like it's not to say that somebody's in such a predicament that they can't do anything. Like, you know, they have their days sometimes. Um, maybe they need to chill out. They deserve to relax. They've been taking care of their kids, their kids, or whoever. Or, you know, it's just, you know, it's a cycle of life. And they their cycle has come to this point. And they need somebody to take care of them or somebody to help them. And this that's the type of people that I want to help because I know that their shit is genuine. And if they qualify... Now, I know for real now that it's genuine. You know what I'm saying? Like, they qualified. I can see I've been in this line of work for so long. Like, I could tell when somebody really need help. But even if they didn't, like, you deserve it. You done made it this far in life, you know. Especially if they got kids that they have taken care of up until this point. A lot of them don't even have communication with their kids. That's sad as fuck to me. Like, these are the type of people that I want to help. Not somebody that's calling me, asking for help, taking advantage. You know what I'm saying? I'm taking time out my day to help them and they don't want to help themselves or, you know, they get the help and then they run off with, you know, whatever the fuck it is I help them with. Like, that's not the type of people I want to help. Really, anything in the healthcare field because, not like, it's nothing personal. It's all business related. So, you know, yeah, I like to help. I like to be there for people. I like to make people feel good in general about they self, all that. This is, to me, like the best way to do it. Um, besides that, I know I wouldn't say all that in the interview. That's long as hell. <laughs> but besides that, like, I just feel like seniors, they seniors. They've been here for a while. They've been there, done that. Like, it's a lot of times where I don't know like maybe this is my place because I could be dealing with something regarding my kids and I don't take that to work because you never know like if they facing dementia or if they have already been diagnosed or Alzheimer's or something like that when you tell them something's worrying I could have an issue with my kids but I'm not gonna bring it up to them because if they suffer from those diseases the number one thing that stay on their mind is worry and they trying to figure out how to help you and every time you come back they even if the situation is resolved they still gonna remember like are you still having issues with your son oh i'm so sorry for you like they sorry for you for real and that's what's replaying in their mind you know what i'm saying i don't want to do that to them so i typically don't talk about like personal stuff especially if it's bad even if it was resolved you know but when i do um talk to them they might be telling me like oh do you have kids oh i remember when i had kids they didn't want to eat their vegetables and i would chop their vegetables up and smash it into their mashed potatoes and mix it up i did have a client tell me that before um and it was like okay because mila is not with it she's she's not with it <laughs> and um she'll eat mashed potatoes though but it's not an issue that i have but she she does she doesn't like vegetables so that's something I could note. Like, they always have words of wisdom, you know. They always have something that they could pass down or, you know, just stories of, like, what real family is. And That's crazy because I was just singing this recently. Why would it be on the radio? The universe is crazy. I'm trying to see what this is. Like, why? Is they just played it and it went off. That's so crazy. But anyway, 
Um, because you know, back in their time, they didn't have everything that we have now. So they have really good um, insight on activities and things that they did with their family and, that, you know, if they worked, what they did when they came home, what they had their kids do, um, just different ways that they enjoyed their family, enjoyed each other's company and, you know, it always kind of turns into like, oh, but now the kids aren't here or, you know, they don't check in or we're not talking because of this or whatever, which is sad. But it's always something to take away from me. And it, it's something for me to, like, prep my kids about. Because I don't know. When I get that age, there's, I don't know what else, what else I'm going to do. Like, when my kids leave, I'll be crying. Now, they haven't left recently. So, I don't know. If I'm not doing nothing and I'm sitting at home. If my kids leave and I don't have nothing to do and I'm sitting at home. I'm crying. I'm like, where are my kids? I start blowing them up. Like, I, I got Alexa on their device. They could call me. They could announce me. They got phones. You know, I'm calling whoever. Like, I'm bugging them because when are you coming home? <laughs> what what What's going on with the time? You know? And so everything is literally for my kids. I know a lot of people say everything I do is for my kids. And it really don't be. Like, it really don't be your hair your nails your whatever whatever else you did and your kids went without or whatever the fuck the case is like that's not for your kids you feel me now i could see if it was like i'm an influencer and i need my hair and my nails done and whatever because i'm gonna make that money off this video or you know whatever it is like or a rapper or whatever you know your image is what gets you paid or whatever sometimes but just to do just to do it and it don't benefit your kids in no type of way beyond if I look good I feel good and if I feel good I can be a better mom type shit whatever you know I don't know but genuinely everything I do is for my kids like it's crazy like if you name something I can tell you how what it is is for my kids But yeah, so I like in senior years, baby, I don't know what I'm gonna do because I don't even know what I do now. Like, I can't even be in a relationship. I don't like people. I don't like people that un don't understand having kids and stuff. Like, you can't come to my house. I'm not going to your house. Uh,. I don't know, it just be different things. People be like, oh, well, you said that last week. Oh, you still busy? Oh, you always busy. You're like, I really, I really am a single parent. I really don't have help with this shit. When people do help, it's when they feel like it. I don't get no notice. I don't have time to plan nothing out for myself. It's literally like, can I come get the kids? I don't have, I don't have time to make plans or do anything, which is fucked up because for one person in particular, it's supposed to be on schedule. You know what I'm saying? I can't even work if I want to. I got to be like, are you going to get them? I got to wait for them to get picked up to be like, can I come to work? Because I do work for an agency where I can get paid more than double what I make now. But I can't do that because I done messed up my reputation with them because I've been known to be like, oh, never mind. I don't have nobody to get my kids now because somebody want to go party. You know what I'm saying? So it's really hard on me. And I really wish people I really wish people would take the time out to just think about think about if you really got your kids by yourself and no help. Because some people have help from their mom. Some people have help from like cousins and stuff. But they'll be like, I do this I do this shit by myself. I'm kinda sick, y'all. And no, I do this shit by myself. Like for real. There's nobody I could call and be like, hey my friend birthday today can I come out I'm already let you know off, off rip I don't think I can come I don't you know I'm gonna ask who who I can ask I only got two people to ask I'm gonna ask who I can ask and if it's it's no to them they can't do it whatever I'm, I'm already letting you know and you my friend so you already know which I don't have many friends either because of that like I can't be consistent I can't make plans how are you gonna be friends with somebody you can't even get to know because you can't even get out or nothing I could barely talk on the phone like and so I just really be needing people to like understand where I'm coming from like you know if I couldn't come out last week and I can't come out again this week like and I can't come out again next week like don't give me 
like a guilt trip of you always say that people make time for what they want to make time for you know maybe if I felt that you were genuine and you were understanding and maybe this could be a good relationship you're patient maybe I would be like you know what come through or maybe I would be like you know what I got my kids but meet me over here you know what I'm saying like the wind is really blowing I would try to make accommodations you know um or I got do you got kids bring your kids let the kids play while we talk or whatever you know what I'm saying like just different things like that but I'm not going out my way for somebody that I can already see like this is not going to be a good relationship because you already don't listen you don't understand you're selfish as fuck you know what I'm saying like it automatically blows me you're automatically blocked like I just so and I don't want to have additional stress in my life that will take you know like just give me bad energy and shit around my kids where now I'm quiet and I'm like I can't stand motherfucker that like but I'm around my kids with that energy you know what I'm saying so like I don't, I don't know maybe I'm thinking too far I don't really think about it it's just an act but it, it is kind of deep I guess but that's just what it is it's like mm, it's just what it is it's nothing that I have to think about it's just automatic like oh no no motherfucker showing signs of xyz you're cut off no no you know you're not understanding you're impatient oh you being selfish you cut off oh you didn't listen the first time I told you you got a problem with it because it's the same thing this week like I'm good respectfully I'm good love but yeah so anyway everything I do is for my kids I'll worry about me later and so I just hope that you know hopefully when I get up there in age they take care of me because I done sacrificed and dedicated my whole entire life to them. I know I could have had this motherfucking car. I forgot that. Um, I'm trying to see how windy it is, though. Ugh. They touch pay actually fucking work. So, I can use my Apple Pay. A lot of places, they shit don't work for real. Okay, so it's gonna be probably a little noisy because I gotta blast the heat because I'm cold. I'm cold. I ain't grabbing no coat today because when I go to work, I don't take my nice coats or anything like that. It's like a hoodie, something easy that I don't mind washing all the time and stuff. But like my nice coats, no, I need to be able to throw it in a washer, dryer, multiple times. So um, I can't find my coat. I'm assuming that it's in a washer. And we have a little mix-up going on. I don't know what Kichiro did. He's already at school, so I couldn't ask what he did. But I think there's clean clothes in the washer. Like, they came out the dryer and went into the washer. But in the washer is my dirty work clothes. Because as soon as I come home, I strip at the door, put the stuff in the washer, close the washer, run and go get in the shower, put on new clothes or whatever. And then I go get them from school. And so all my work clothes is in the washer waiting to be washed until the end of the week but it looked like he tried to close out the dryer and put him in a washer so so my jacket I don't, I don't know where it's at I don't know I think it's in a washer which when I figured it out I didn't have time to do anything about it I had to go to work so I tried to call my agency job again yesterday to see if I could do like a nine to nine something really where I will be able to drop the kids off and go to work nobody's gonna take my kids to school in the morning and then come back and pick them up in the afternoon but this is why because my daughter's and another sacrifice being made my daughter's school bus um comes 30 minutes before my son can get out the car and go into his school. Her bus picks her up and drops her off at his school. So I just don't think that at seven o'clock in the morning, nobody's gonna sit there 
have her there at seven o'clock in the morning. Like they gotta come. Well, I gotta probably take him over there, but take her and him to school at seven in the morning, seven thirty, and then wait thirty minutes for eight o'clock for Keytrail to get out the car and go. And the same thing when they pick them up, pick him up at three thirty and wait till four o five to get her off the bus. Her bus come in at it's supposed to be three. 345 I think I don't know but okay so I'm done with that um I actually got that a little too early but um yeah so I don't think anybody's gonna do that for me because my daughter's bus it doesn't come on time it usually comes at like 405 407 sometimes 409 but definitely after four um and so i just don't think anybody's gonna want to do that and then keep them for a couple of hours so if i could drop them off at school and then go to work and just have somebody pick them up i think that would be the best thing to do um let me get my seat belt on oh So another sacrifice being made, my kids go to two different schools, even though it's grade school. Um, the grade school where they start kindergarten at only goes up to second grade. So at third grade, they transfer to another school. So Mila's in kindergarten, Keytrail's in third grade. So they go to two different schools. Now, when she was in preschool, he was in, um, he was in like second grade or even kindergarten. They still went to two different schools. I just sacrificed. I just took them to, they, to each school, and then I went to work. I worked, and then I came home and picked both of them up. Um, and it was easier because when Mila was in preschool, she was in a preschool that, you know, I had to pick her up before 6, I think 6.30, something like that. Keytrail was able to go to a daycare and I wouldn't have to pick him up until 6, 6.30. I think that one was 6.30 for sure. So on my way home, I work in Naperville. Mila's, I hit Mila's um, daycare first and then I go to Keytrail's and then we'll go back home. Like those, that's the sacrifice that I was making so that she can go to the best daycare because um, I didn't want her to go to the daycare that he went to after school. I just felt like she was too young and I felt like they're not the best ones for a young age. So she went somewhere else. And then he went to the one by his school, which was good for him because they're black. They're black people, black staff. I don't think I saw one white staff there. Not that that's a problem, but they know how to handle our children, I feel like. And, and they did. They showed me that. Like, they were patient with him. They were still kind. Um, they still worked with him and motivated him and think but I just feel like they had a better connection with him like they They could they they I don't I don't know how to explain it, but to me it was just better I saw his behavior changing. I don't know if it's cuz to him. He was like, oh, they black, you know, some people get scared of black people I don't know that kids Do that I don't know that they have the mental capacity to be like I'm scared of another black person, but He his behavior was different it was different. It was better. I didn't have a lot of phone calls. The only calls I would get is, hey, Miss Thompson, I know you said Keytrail should be working on homework. Um, he's not. He's playing. We can't force him to do that, but we just wanted to let you know that he's not working on anything today. That was it. And, and when he played with people, he was friendly with people. You know, I didn't have no issues. So I made the best decision for them, and I sacrificed my gas and my time and everything to make sure they got there and picked up and they went to the places that I thought was best for them. I really don't feel like smelling this coffee. I don't know why it's irritating me right now. It's making me like nauseous, ugh. Anyway, so now they go to the best schools. Keytra went to an academy, but it stops at third grade. So now he went on to another school that has the same programs that the academy had, which is an engineering. So it's not just learning math and reading he's learning like how to build robots he's using those numbers to build a robot to program a robot he's using and not just robot that's just the example that i'm using um why i feel like i don't know where i'm at he's using um 
the reading like he knows when people talk to my kid they like i remember my cousin who's very smart she's a very smart girl she like tony come get your son he using big words like it's so funny to me but we always get compliments and keytrell is very smart before the program very smart that's why i like took action asap because i taught him spanish basic like hola como estas uno dos tres like days of the week like i taught him spanish at a very young age and he caught on and i didn't ex well it started with the abcs i didn't expect him to do that i was just you know i hoping i don't know what i was doing i was just playing around but he was catching on to shit and i was like wait a minute we got something here <laughs> you know so very early i knew that he was gifted or something okay and i took action asap no we're not gonna sit around no we're not gonna just stay at home and play on video games or xyz like no you're going into things you're gonna do things you know you're gonna go to the best schools i don't give a fuck what it takes my daughter i want her to go to the best school that i seen what they did for my son they were able to you know keep up with him they were able to help him so she goes to the school now and i am not going to lie to you I know everybody learns differently so I wasn't crushed but I was like what's going on because I'm reading with my daughter and I could say what letter is this and she'll say I don't know and I'll say it's L so what letter is this and she'll say I don't know again and it's like I just told you I just told you what it was what's going on I was worried I was worried damn her coffee spilled a little bit I hate when they do that because I don't want it looking like I took a sip of your shit, but <laughs> um, I was worried. So then she goes to school. They in school for about two weeks. And then we had, you guys went with us. We did the, um, not the parent teacher. Thing. I forgot what it's called. Curriculum night, I think. Anyway, we do that. We go there. Now I'm already realizing that she knows, she know her stuff. She pretty good. But when we did go to the school, you know, they want, you know, the teachers have something that they want to recite so you can see what they've been working on. And they, you know, the words that they were working on, they have all that lined up. So she's going down the line saying all the words that she learned. Um, letters, she's got, she's getting all her letters right and everything. Like, I'm impressed. I'm impressed. And I'm just like, I'm happy because I was worried. And I don't know what you guys are doing, but you're doing a good job because my son learns at a quick pace and you know they learn differently and they both learned what they needed to learn so i know that they're doing what they can for students who even learn a different way at a different pace you know so i was happy about that y'all see i'm holding on to my receipts for dear life because they going on uh what's it called how did i forget they going on the app okay they going on fetch they going on fetch so the link to fetch is in the description below. You might as well take advantage of it. I got about 40,000 points. So I'm trying to get to 50,000. And y'all can help me by signing up. Because when you sign up, I get points and you get points. I'm trying to get to 50,000 before I cash out. But anyway, I'm going to sit right here and eat. And then I'm going to go in. I got about... 25 minutes about 25 minutes but um yeah so it's a sacrifice that i'm making because my kids are going to the best schools two different schools no daycare i think a daycare will go to my daughter's school i know a daycare will go to my daughter's school um because they did when my son was there but when i called they wasn't accepting more clients because of covid even though covid was kind of over with um she was like they're doing some type of i don't know what it is um i think it was like family friend and something i forgot what it was but i'm like you know we used to come there so and she was like no we don't we're not so i was like okay then and i'm like i don't know if y'all don't want to work with me anymore i don't think i did anything the most i did was like i pay late like three days late <laughs> and she'll be like tony why you don't just pay the whole thing once a month? Why are you paying every week? And I'm like, because I don't like to see my money leave. <laughs> no, but besides that, everything was good. So I don't know, but um, I just never check back because it's like, what the fuck y'all got going on? But anyway, even if Mila did go to that daycare, 
that's the same one. I don't think it's good for her. Um, like, they let boys be boys. And, like, that's a good place for my son. But that's not a good place for my daughter. But I would give them a try if there was a place that picked up my son and transported him back to daycare. And then I would just pick them up after I get off of work. I would try. You know, I would let her tell me how she likes it. I would ask questions to her, to the staff, you know, and I would try it. But it, it doesn't even matter right now because there's no there's nobody to get Keytra. So, but I've been thinking, I've been exploring my options lately. But if they went to one school and it wasn't one of these schools, all right. It's somebody like parked right in front of me and he's just sitting in his car like he just got back in his car but he's just sitting there and I'm like irritated by that but anyway if they went to the same school um, and it wasn't one of these two schools they would have a daycare nearby that would transport them so it's like do I take them about the schools that's working for them you know or you know I don't know so I did actually ask the school um, if I would be able to have my kids go to the same school and come out of those programs and they advised me that I cannot do that they said that once my kids are in that program they have to finish out the years in those schools um, and I was like, okay, well, what if I move to my mom's house because she lives kind of far from me, but in the same district. They said that since we have a busing system, that would not be an excuse. We would have a bus that would pick them up and take them to their prospective schools. So that is not an option. It's, it's a tough decision because it's like we could have so much more. We could be doing so much better if I can work, even if it was just my business, if I could just work on my business a little bit more, but... It, it takes, um, takes, this is like a fucking, not a smoothie. Anyway, it takes money to do that. And it's like, the money that I do get, you know, bills, birthdays, holidays, and just, I can do stuff, but I can't do much. Like, I have to be careful because where's my next dollar coming from? You know what I'm saying? So, I'm always, like, aware of that. Like, be careful because anything, like, my car keeps fucking up or kept fucking up. And, you know, I didn't budget for that. I didn't expect that. But I had it. You know what I'm saying? I was able to go get my shit fixed. So, I just have to take that stuff into consideration. And, then, like, to me, it's not a thought in my mind. Like, no, they're going to the best school. So, I need to figure out a way around it. I have to show y'all this because I'm finna throw it away. <laughs> okay, so now I'm at the college. I need to get a, a duplicate. I need to get a duplicate of my certificate of completion for the basic nurse training. Basically, you see an A. This is all burp. What is it? Geese. So disgusting. Anyway, it's cold, y'all. I should have put my coat in the car. Well, I thought that was the Bad Girl Club um, bus. And then the V looked like a W. I'm like, that's the Baddies West. <laughs> that's the Baddie West tour bus. Okay. Is my camera dirty? I'm remembering my school days. Oh my goodness. I used to get food out of there, sit over here. I used to bring my kids here too. When I had class and I had to study and shit. Oh my gosh, it's absolutely empty. <laughs> so this is the seat I always sit in right next to the printer because people be nosy people will fumble through your shit knowing it ain't got nothing to do with them number one cinnamon sprinkle cinnamon in your coffee instead of a packet of sugar by making this change 
you'll prevent a brain fogging blood sugar spike. Cinnamon also has anti inflammatory and antioxidant effects, whereas sugar creates inflammation. Number two, raw or slightly cooked vegetables. The more you cook a vegetable, the more you may compromise the blood sugar blocking capabilities of the fiber it contains. This fiber can minimize some of the blood sugar spikes created by carbs, especially when you eat the vegetable before the carb. Number three, vinegar. Vinegar has been shown to keep blood sugar levels in check by preventing some of the starch in bread or pasta from turning into sugar. You'll effortlessly lower your blood sugar by switching from store-bought salad dressings that often contain sugar to a simple blend of vinegar and olive oil. Number four, tea. Tea may reduce the amount of glucose absorbed by the intestine, which reduces blood sugar spikes. Iced tea at lunch. One study showed black tea did this better than other types of tea. White tea was second best at preventing blood sugar spikes and also contained very little caffeine, which makes it a great choice to accompany dinner at night. Number five, red wine. As we'll see later in this section, for those without a history of alcoholism or problem drinking, a glass of red wine with dinner may lessen blood sugar spikes by preventing intestinal glucose absorption and reducing your liver's production of glucose. One study found that red wine looking. may be more effective at blocking glucose absorption than white wine. Simple swaps. Here are some simple swaps and switches to help reduce blood sugar spikes. Cut the pasta in half and sub zucchini or spaghetti squash noodles for half. You can use a vegetable peeler. When you do cook pasta, make it al dente. Overcooking pasta increases its glycemic index. So set the timer for a minute or two below the suggested cooking time. When you're making pasta, use half as much pasta and add broccoli or cauliflower. It's no filter. Okay, so I just decided to pick up the camera because I forgot. Um, my, thank you. My client's birthday is on Friday and I felt so bad because when she told me, I was like, oh, do you have any plans? And she hit me with the, oh, um, I don't have any plans because my husband's dead and my mom and dad is dead and all my friends are in nursing homes or they live far away or they're dead too. And then she was like, when you get to be my age, everybody you know is either dead or in nursing homes and you can't really get to them. And I'm just like, okay. So I'm like, well, you don't want to do nothing for yourself. Maybe cook something that you really like, watch a movie, get some popcorn, some something like that, you know. And um, she was like, nah, I don't have any plans. So I'm like, oh, okay. So I was like, I'm going to get her something and drop it off, even though I don't work on Friday. And she's a two-hour client, so whatever. I, actually, whatever I make helping her is like, she's going to get it back. But it's okay. I'm over-blessed. So anyway, I have a headache. I'm gonna need you to stay over there because I ain't stopping. Thank you. Okay, so anyway, the phone is gonna die though. So I'm just gonna bring y'all out when we get to where we going. Okay. I wanna get her a bag. I kinda wanna see what this one is. I don't know. Forget it. It ain't. It ain't the wow factor. They got so many new options. Why are you so loud? Why? I should probably appreciate that little dragonfly. It's alive all the time. It's alive all the time. It's alive. It's alive. The butterflies or the dragonflies? The butterflies. Not the dragon. I like the dragonflies. I tried to scare you guys. But that's cute too. So, uh -huh. 
This bird is mixed with a dragon. I think so, like the dragon flies. Why? Dragonflies. So this is not the Walmart I went to the first time. So I don't see the tissue paper that I was looking for. But I do see bags for freaking 98 cent. And I was going to get this one. But I think I'm going to get this one. And um, that's crazy. Kind of pissed because now I got to hold on to my receipt and stuff for Dollar Tree and I'll just get something else later. Damn, but now I got to go to another store, I think, because I don't think they got this tissue paper I wanted. But since I got a new bag, I actually don't need the gold tissue paper. Even though here goes some tissue paper. We'll see, we'll see. Oh, uh, apparently that tissue paper is 148. All these bags are so freaking cute. Wrap him up in the blanket. This is so cute. It's in Mila size, but it's 13.98 and targets are better. But it's so cute though. Okay, back at home goods cuz I really didn't know what to get my client, but she um Hmm, interview today. I wonder what their discount is. But anyway, she loves like nice British um, style dishware. And although they don't have any in here, I do think she would like the um, gold outline trim plate that I have. So I'm going to get her one of those and see if I can find a vase. And I'm going to just put some flowers in it. So like she got dishes like this. Oh y'all I think y'all seen her dishes before. These not the ones I got though. This is cute. So I saw these on Amazon for a lot of money. I don't know, look it up though. And the in the bunny. Can you try to put this in the way? It's a bun. It's a bun. Na, na, na. Piggy bank. Piggy bank. I like them. There's a pineapple. Pineapple. There's a bun. That's what I was trying to feel. The pineapple, right? It's a porky. That's nice. All right. So, first of all, those are cute for the two ninety nine. Oh. I said three ninety nine. Now I ain't saying seven ninety nine and ten ninety nine. And they they cheaper bouquets are so small. Why do I keep smelling this everywhere I go? It smell like lemongrass or sulfur. I washed my face with it, but I smell it real good in here now. I forgot to tell y'all the hunt for the client's birthday gift goes on, okay? Look how much time and energy going to somebody trying to get somebody something. Anyway, I just left out of um, Ross. I was looking for like a two-piece pajama set. I picked up one and um, cause she always in pajamas. So I'm like, let me see if they got something in here. Hi. Hi. Let me see. Anyway, I'm just about to look around and see what I see. Try not to look at stuff for me and the kids. I really don't see her with her arms out. So that's not really an option. She ain't gonna wear no tie-dye. Ooh, the black teacups. Stay focused. 
her some pajamas. She ain't gonna wear no shorts. I don't see her wearing shorts anywhere. Oh, okay. What is that? Um, some funny shit. I was gonna say, I fuck with National Geographic. <laughs> Enough to buy a shirt, yeah. All right. She really be hot all the time. I'm gonna go, cause it's loud. literally just bag everything up and forgot to show y'all what I got her like the hunt is over let me see cuz I think y'all saw the plate it's the blue one I put a picture in and then I got what did I get oh a $10 gift card to McDonald's in a pajama set so it says dream often love more be kind it's from Lauren Ashley. I got it from Ross for like 16 bucks, 16.99 I believe. Um, and this is what the print looks like all through the pants. It's like a long, uh, this is a short sleeve, but the pants are long. Um, so yeah, I got that. I got the blue plate. That's what's wrapped up under here, the circular. And then I just got the $10 gift card. Okay, I don't know why my camera looks like that, but also those are her flowers. But um, tomorrow, when I take them to her, I'm gonna take them out of there because I'm definitely keeping my vase. That's not hers. <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, so I also got her those flowers. Can't really tell what kind they are, but you might. I might have showed y'all this though. Okay, I just got off work at the other client um, house. I went to the office to turn in my time sheet. And oh my gosh, it almost turned into an argument because I they got my check wrong and I asked her to have a breakdown, to have everybody, to have everything ready on Friday. So when I drop off my check stubs, I mean my check my time sheets, we can go over it. She didn't have it ready. So I don't have time to keep sitting there. I gotta drop this off, go get some steaks, and then get my kids from school. something since you didn't have plans yeah oh no how <laughs> nice so enjoy thank you you're welcome <laughs> yeah i'll see you tuesday okay okay she thought it was something slight she almost dropped that bag <laughs> baby it's heavy 
so I got her the pajamas, the plate, and a $10 gift card to McDonald's. So y'all know, every time I go to work, she asks me to go get her a coffee from McDonald's, so that was a given. Now, I did want to go get some steak. I wanted to try that Benihana frozen rice, but I don't feel like doing nothing extra now. Like, it sucked my time and energy sitting there talking to my job. Like, what the fuck, y'all? Anyway, hey again, picking up on a new day. Um, this should be the same vlog, like continuance. But, let me see, it's 2.39. See, they make my time weird, like, they made my timing like weird and thrown off by not having that shit ready and then steady going back and forth like so the thing is like my hours is not matching up on record like my record and the timesheet that I gave them my record and my timesheet that I gave them is the same the check stub don't look right so I was telling her that and I honestly I don't give a fuck if it was point 25 off like 25 you know the hours whatever minutes i don't give a fuck if it was point 25 off add my shit because i'm telling you when i look at the clock i leave at 1 30 and if i'm late sometimes i might have to stay like an extra eight minutes it'd be kicking my ass every time i look up the time be going by so slow and i'd be like damn come on so i could clock out like i'd be wanting to if i get in at 9 38 i'm leaving at I'm leaving at 138. I want my shit to be on point. You feel me? So if I don't know, for some reason you miss three minutes on that day, bitch, I want my three minutes respectfully. Because you don't know what I went through them last few minutes trying to get them last three minutes in that I was late or whatever the fuck the case is. Like, that's annoying as fuck. I think probably from now on, which they not gonna like, of course not, right? But when I get there, just clock in. And then if I see like, oh, it's almost 1.30, shit, it's 128, I'ma clock out right now. I'ma just start doing that shit because y'all already don't pay me what I want to be paid. Like they came up, but it still ain't what I wanted. So I don't have time for that. I don't know why I'm working. Like, cause it, like to me it ain't enough it's it's like play money like you know what i mean like i could save and do something with it but i really don't have to save for anything that i want like i don't know not not even for like a house like they have um first time renter i mean first time buyers program they have um programs where they give you down payment it's a program that i'm in where i don't have to put a down payment down i don't have to have pti um well what is it called insurance like i don't even need to say for that it would be nice you know what i'm saying but like that's what this money is it's nice but it's not enough to even do shit like to me i don't know but i really i'm just trying to stay in the momentum like to keep me sane because sitting at home i was like going nuts let me see where am i at because i need to go to the store i'm gonna go Okay. Yeah, like sitting at home, I was going crazy. I was worried about everything that psh, some shit I shouldn't even be worrying about. It's too early to worry about. It's too late to worry about. Like, girl, who cares? And honestly, like three days of work, I was like, what was I just crying about? What was I just sad about? What was I just down about? Like, I didn't even fucking know anymore. It was like, girl, what the fuck? Like, I just needed to get out and be doing something, doing what I like. Um, seeing people, seeing new faces, helping people, like you know stuff like that and it really just got me out of that so but now that i got what i need i don't want to just dump them all because i just got my fix you know but it still is nice to like wake up and stay up um to be active and come home because really when i be at home it's like girl what are you doing i don't be doing shit i might clean up and stuff which is always nice I really don't be doing shit like i'll drop the kids off at school i come back home clean up i don't know why but sometimes i clean up till it's time to go get them like i'll be late picking them up because i'm so deep into cleaning 
but besides that if i'm not cleaning or if i don't clean so damn much ain't shit else to clean up like i'm just sitting at home scrolling watching youtube at the same time maybe typing something up or working on my business like all that at the same time and it's really making steps towards my business but it's not really action like you know i don't know how to explain it but i'm trying to think i just heard that somewhere i think it's in that um atomic habits book it's like where you like you could spend all your time preparing for something but it don't mean nothing until you go at it with full force and oh it's a story right here i was gonna go all the way over there anyway it don't really mean shit until you actually take that step and do it so like if i'm saying i want to start a babysitting company right because it's a lot more basic than my business explaining my business but if i say i want to do babysitting right so you sitting at home you thinking of a name you trying to get your llc together you getting your business plan together you getting your paperwork together like um for them to sign the application the handbook like yeah you could work towards all of this but once you got all that so then what so then you say oh i'm learning how to um how to tell a child no and be firm or how to discipline in the daycare like you doing all this, but really it don't mean nothing until you start. You need to start and then try to see where to go from there. You might not even have to discipline, you know? So it's like I'm sitting at home fulfilling myself off of, oh, okay, today I learned X, Y, Z. Today I got these paperworks out the way. Today I did this, today I did that. Granted, I did send off an application and I sent the check off for my licensing <laughs> um, and it was incorrect. Still waiting on them to send it back to me, but I was proactive and resent the shit, the correct shit. So like I have been doing stuff, important stuff, but I mean all in all the scrolling is excessive. Like I could look up and fucking 5 hours went by and all I did was maybe filled out an application, wrote on a check, scroll down. I'm talking about Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, like, and on multiple devices. Like, YouTube's on the table, on the, on the table. YouTube's on the TV. The paperwork on my lap. On my phone, we got TikTok. And on the computer, we might have Facebook. Like, literally. All at the same time. I don't know. So, and I really don't be on social media and stuff like that. Sometimes I just watch, but sometimes I don't even be on there watching. So I think just sometimes I get into like where I see the new, how new shit is, like what people are doing now, um, what people are talking about now in the media, in the news, you know, stuff like that. And then I just want to keep going like, oh, I didn't even know, I didn't even know this was going on. Like, I need more of this. And then before you know it, like I just spent seven hours scrolling, got one application done and wrote on one check have done so much more so for that i could be at work at least bringing some money in and then when i get home i could do the scrolling i still have time for scrolling application and writing on the check you know there's still time for that so because what's determining if i got time or not is how much time i'm scrolling you know but anyway i mean i'm just saying that for anybody else who in that situation because I really felt good and fulfilled like I'm doing things towards my business I did xyz today like you can't tell me shit in actuality like I could still work a job come home and have done that same shit it really only takes 10 minutes to fill out the application it's all of your information your name your address your number your email your website how many people you how many people work for you um their name their number like it's really easy basic shit that only took me 10 minutes but because i was scrolling it took me seven hours you know so yeah that could wait i could go to work i could go to work and come home and get that done like that's the breakdown okay if it, if it was sounding complicated that's the breakdown <laughs> so but then i look at it and i'll be like damn you know i did have these I kind of see why I left work because work is stressful too. It got to be a balance. Like when I ain't gonna lie, I was like, I need y'all need to do something because I'm not gonna be working with one client for two hours. This is the one that I just took the gift to. I only see her once a week for two hours. 
So it was like, hell no, I'm not gonna leave home. Come over here. Like that's my whole check. Um, getting there and getting back home. That's crazy for two hours. Like no, that's stupid. But it's kind of on the. I don't know. It's kind of on the on the border. Like it is just the gas, but a little bit more. So it's like as long as I ain't out of everything, like I'll do it. But um. It's so crazy. I've been going to the stores lately. I ain't been doing Amazon Fresh. It's getting sunny. Market. Oh, come on. Anyway. I ain't gonna wait for nobody to cross. So I was waiting on him. So then now this dude come. Oh, he said go ahead. You gotta tell me twice. Anyway. It's like I be mean, but then I be so sweet and nice. <laughs> But anyway, that's what I was going to say. The lady, she's so nice and, you know, they're innocent, the seniors, and they need people. Is this the wrong way? Because y'all got me all messed up. Let me try and whip it in here. You stay over there. Don't worry about it. Because y'all like me, y'all like to see scenery. To going to Jewel Osco. <laughs> I don't think I need a cart. Ooh, that's what I'm talking about. I went somewhere and these was oh Whole Foods. It was like twenty four dollars. So four is six ninety nine and nine is twelve dollars. I like the white ones. I don't like chocolate. Look at that. Okay, but anyway, I was gonna say I meant to get her like a little cake. Totally forgot. Or like a cupcake. I didn't need a cart. Very unique is even more important than choosing organic produce. While both organic produce and animal products are cleaner in general, organic animal products have more brain healthy anti inflammatory omega 3s and fewer omega 6s. Egg laying hens and milk producing cows allow it to roam in open air live in far cleaner conditions than animals sequestered in their disgusting, feces contaminated cages and of conventional factory farms. 
their animal full of antibiotics. This practice has led to bacteria that have become resistant to these drugs in both animals and humans. Meat. Let's start with meat. There's a big difference between the saturated fat in the average cheeseburger and those in a lean cut of organic grass-fed beef. Beef flavored organic, grass-fed, free-roaming, or pasture tend to have significantly more omega-3 and significantly fewer omega-6s. The average conventionally raised beef will have an omega-6 to omega-3 ratio of 7.65 per one. Grass-fed beef brings the omega-6 content way down to about 1.5 to 1 in excellent High-protein beans have more omega-3s than omega-6s. Another bonus levels, understanding flow factors. A lot of people look at the recommendations each set. Remember, a cup is 8 ounces. The average mug for a small Starbucks cup is 12 ounces. A fancy Starbucks is approaching all ounces. It's a good for the reason since these two ranges overlap a bit. But the best gift is for Jennifer to go in meaningful and happy. Where would I live? None of Jennifer's dreams panic attacks, debilitating and secret joys and possibilities of her life. She was choosing short-term avoidance of discomfort over long periods of time by people who don't really need them. Anti-anxiety drinks. Adorax. Adorolin. Halcyon. Inderol. Guanapin, Librium, Neuron, Bilify, Clauseril, Compazine, Thernat, Geodon, Haldol, Loxetan. popular that the Rolling Stones wrote a song called Mother's Little Helper about a woman who uses them simply to get through her day. By 1975, over 100 million benzodiazepine prescriptions were written every year in the U.S. The troublesome research that began to pop up as early as 1963 didn't seem to make a dent in Benzo's popularity. No. In 1984, scientists noticed shrunken and damaged brains in the scans of patients who used benzodiazepines regularly. They also found a link between long-term benzodiazepine use and an increased risk of dementia. Some of the brain-fogging effects of benzodiazepine have been shown to be potentially irreversible, with the subject in one study continuing to show deficits in verbal learning and memory, learning, attention, physiospatial abilities, general intellectual ability, reaction time, psychomotor speed, and increased cognitive decline. High doses may result in depression. The authors did find some studies that identified no relation to Getting off or even reducing the dosage of these drugs has been shown to be extremely difficult as well. As one researcher put it, it is more difficult to withdraw people from benzodiazepines than it is from heroin. Given all these risks, concerns about benzos should have become moot when the somewhat less risky SSRIs or selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors popped onto the American market in 1987. Many of use dependence or dementia. While many patients did indeed switch to these safer drugs, the maker of the newer benzodiazepine Xanax adopted a clever marketing strategy to keep benzos relevant. They secured FDA approval, but even with these well-respected medical authorities screaming their disapproval, the marketing every year. Since long-term benzodiazepine use may result in irreversible damage, people with mild to moderate anxiety should first consider cognitive behavioral therapy or other clinically proven models of psychotherapy, changes in diet and exercise, and spiritual practices like meditation, all of which we'll be doing in this program. Drugs this powerful should always be used in combination with therapy which helps treat the root causes of anxiety. We have treated hundreds of patients with panic attacks, anxiety, PTSD, and phobias. 
I use graded exposure therapy and other forms of cognitive behavioral therapy to help them make changes that correct the root of the problem, which can cure the problem, as opposed to just medicating the symptom. It is also, and I can't emphasize this enough, a real disease that requires real treatment. For people who meet the diagnostic criteria for major depressive disorder, antidepressants and clinically proven models of therapy such as cognitive behavioral therapy are as vital as insulin is to a diabetic. Untreated depression can be both debilitating and life-threatening. I will say it again, depression is a real disease and must be treated as such. If a severely depressed person starts taking antidepressants, he or she should also be in therapy. And in the case of depression, cognitive behavioral therapy has been shown to be extremely effective in achieving remission as quickly as possible. Therapy also helps the patient deal with self-defeating thoughts while providing weekly monitoring for suicidality, which is especially important in kids and teens. Unfortunately, the nature of depression prevents many who are truly suffering, perhaps even half of all depressed Americans, according to one study, from seeking treatment, which is understandable since depression robs people of energy, motivation, and hope. The depressed brain is also more susceptible to self-loathing, which leads people to characterize their condition as a character defect. Another problem is that depressed people often view asking for help as a sign of weakness, so they stay silent even when they desperately need support. The flip side of this tragedy is that many of the people who do take antidepressants, up to two-thirds of them in fact, aren't actually depressed. That means that only 83 million of the 250 million plus SSRI prescriptions dispensed every year in this country may be truly necessary. If you're taking antidepressants and you don't need them, you may be setting yourself up to think and feel worse, with no real benefit. SSRIs come with some well-known side effects, one or more of which most patients will experience. Weight gain, 10 pounds or more in about 25% of patients, sexual dysfunction, which about 50%, or in some of the rest they need at night, which allows them to regain sensitivity to serotonin and other feel-good chemicals during the day. Another issue is that while the benefits of SSRIs might take a month to six weeks to kick in, many of the side effects emerge right away. So a person who is already depressed must often put up with things getting worse before they get better. And what about when the time comes to change the dose or stop taking the medication? Discontinuing SSRIs can produce irritability, anxiety, and fatigue. And major changes in dosages double the risk of suicide. Several studies have also identified an alarming association between antidepressants and cancer, especially breast or ovarian cancer. SSRIs can also prevent anti-cancer drugs from working well in patients, which has been shown to lead to an increased risk of death in women being treated for cancer while also taking an antidepressant. There is also an increased risk of death and stroke. A 2009 study looked at over 100,000 postmenopausal women, a group that is fairly likely to be taking antidepressants, over at least five years and found that the women taking antidepressants were much more likely to have a stroke or die compared to women not taking antidepressants. Both newer SSRIs and the older tricyclic antidepressants show this risk. But surely these hazards are all par for the course, right? These drugs must be remarkably effective if they're prescribed so frequently. Otherwise, doctors wouldn't bother. Maybe. Teacher. Or maybe not. In 2007, the esteemed New England Journal of Medicine looked at both published and unpublished studies on the effectiveness of antidepressants. All but one of the studies with a favorable um, outcome my had been published, whereas half of the KFC studies with failed to show a favorable outcome never saw the light of day. 
Little Caesars also on my right. One to one ratio of total studies, both published and unpublished, that found these drugs to be effective versus those that did not. Meaning that for every study that found these drugs worked, another found they didn't. Physicians are clearly linked and should be addressed in tandem. You simply cannot treat depression without also taking inflammation into account. So if you're eating the typical American inflammatory diet of high omega-6s from non-organic beef or chicken, soybean oil used in most dressings, soda, added sugar or flour, you might be putting yourself at a greater risk of depression. A massive study of 73,000 people over a span of years found that people with higher markers of inflammation in their blood increased their risk of depression two to threefold. Inflammation in the brain can lead to fatigue. The inflammation-depression relationship may also explain why so many non-psychiatric illnesses are associated with depression. It's not just situational, i.e. feeling sad that you have been diagnosed with an illness, but also biological. The long-term inflammation associated with a non-psychiatric illness like cancer or peers or colleagues. Since the FDA approved Adderall in the 1990s, the numbers of people taking the drug have gone up, up, and away. Tens of millions of Adderall prescriptions are filled every year. With almost $8 billion spent on ADHD meds in 2011, double the $4 billion just four years before, stimulants are big money. The number of young adults on stimulants also doubled between 2007 and 2011. And it's not just young people. Adderall has become the mother's little helper for a new generation of moms. Gone is the bored Mad Men era housewife who fills her day with martinis and Valium to medicate her loneliness and boredom. The new archetype is the single mom, the working mom, the two earner household but we still can't make ends meet mom. If a little pill helps her get everything done for her family, what could possibly be wrong with it? A lot. Research shows that Adderall is addictive with multiple withdrawal effects. And it can be as hard to recover from as heroin addiction. Adderall carries a black box warning and is a Schedule II medication. This puts it in the same category as cocaine, methadone, and morphine. It is an extremely serious medication. And you don't have to steal it from little Johnny or even find a drug dealer to get your fix. These days, any adult or even any college student with internet access can figure out which
cars away. Like damn, she and her move. Like damn, she and her move. Like damn, she and her move. She lit, get money too. Like damn, she and her move. In the mirror, I'm doing my dance. Ain't packing out nobody's pants. He a rapper, but don't got a chance. Stuck in my waist, so I'm loving my bands. Like a million views in a day. There's so many ways to get paid. I tried to but he begged me to stay. Bay, I'm not staying, I just wanna play. In the party, he just wanna run. Boobs in the bus, they pump. She a baddie, she knows she a tank. She a baddie with her baddie friend. They like ice, how you always stay hot. Oh, they mad cause I keep making bops. Oh, she mad cause I'm taking her spot. If I was bitches, I'd hate me a lot. Like damn, she in her mood. 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 She lit, no money too. Like damn, she in her mood. Tone. 